Good evening and happy Thursday. Welcome to Thinking Thursday with Miss B. So glad you're here again today. We're definitely going to need some relaxation time in the beginning and calm down and focusing time because tonight's topic is a little deep. Um, we're going to be talking about grief. How do you manage grief during the time of COVID? Um, before we do our breathing, I have a few announcements. First, I want to say, um, and I put this out there and got some feedback already. If you're listening and you can think of a topic you would like to be addressed on Thinking Thursday, just drop it in the comment area. And I'll remind you again later on. Tonight's topic actually came after I did the um, little promo asking everyone for their topic. More than one person has already asked me to talk about grief. So ah, when the request came again this week, I couldn't avoid it. So that is our topic tonight. Um, as we get started, I do want you to think about sharing this. I'm going to walk you through it, and I'm going to do it with you. I'm going to refresh my computer so we can all be together, and we are going to have an opportunity to share it. So for those of you who don't know how to do it, how to start a watch party, if you're watching, which you are because you're here, uh, there is a little purple icon. If you just click, well, the purple little icon, and it says watch party together with your friends. On the right side of it is the word start. If you hit the word start, you have just started a watch party. So start, and it'll be start one more time. So start a watch party, and that'll have, that will let you invite others to join us. So I am so glad you're here and glad you're inviting others. <clears throat> well, as I said, tonight's topic is dealing with grief. Not a happy topic, but something that we all deal with uh, one time or another. And one thing about grief right now, in the time of COVID, it is not the same. And we're going to address that. But you know, as always, we will start with our relaxation. We will start where we're just in that place of let's chill. So let's get ready for that. <sighs> Take a deep, deep breath. And slowly let it out. Take another deep breath. Two, three, four. Let it out. Two, three three, four. One more breath in, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. Ah, Wusa, take that moment just to relax. Before we start talking about the lady, the, uh, I'm sorry, I was reading, um, reading, and I see, hello, Daniel. I was reading some comments that are already popping up. Um, before we start talking about the topic, I want to tell you about something exciting that happened to me, me this week. I got a voicemail from Business Talk Radio inviting me to do a spot on their radio program. So I'm going to drop in the comments after the show um, the link to that. It is next Friday. So I would love to have you all just join me. I will be talking about, I believe, education and the psychological effects of, of school right now. Going back, not going back, virtual, in person, just the everything that students, parents, and teachers and staff are dealing with. So it's an eight-minute section uh, session, and I will put all the information in the chat box, and it'll be on my page. So I'd love to have you um, join me on that as well. Well, as I said, um, tonight's topic is grief. And I got this topic because um, someone asked me to do it. So here is your chance. If there is a topic you would like addressed on Thinking Thursday, drop it in the drop it in the comments, and I'll have a chance to look at it. I'll have a chance to research it and work on it. By way of checking in, just drop a word. How are you doing tonight? Hello, Daniel, Eugene, and Denise. I see I have some people already joining. Um, 
If you're here, how are you doing? What's going on? For some of us, not just you, some of us, it may have been a hectic week or just a crazy week, but we're here and we're ready to get some good information. As I said, tonight we're talking about grief management in the time of COVID. <clears throat> I am big on definitions, thinking if we operate from a common definition, we have the same idea of what we're talking about. Now, we all know what grief is, but I'm going to give you some definitions of grief. Dictionary.com says, grief is deep sorrow, especially that caused by one's death. death. Webster says, deep and poignant distress caused by or as if by bereavement, caused by suffering such as life's joys and griefs. Um... The APA says um, it's a condition of having lost a loved one due to death. The bereaved person may experience emotional pain or distress. So we get the idea, and then it goes on to say with the APA definition that um, grief often includes physiological distress, separation, anxiety. Intense grief can come, become life-threatening. Um, through disruption of your immune system, self-neglect, and suicidal thoughts. So grief is real, and it can have some real negative things um, that can impact you. So we want to um, we want to definitely look at how do we manage this. It's not a pretty thing. What do we do? Well. In looking at what do we do with this thing called grief, let's just look at how different it is in the time of COVID. You know, there are different rituals we have around a person's death. Uh, but let me back up. Death is not the only kind of loss we have. That is not the only thing that causes grief. There are things we, um, we lose. COVID has given us one issue to share in grief, and that is loss of life the way we knew it. And I say knew it in past tense. You know, we talk about going back to things. Our whole being, our whole genetic makeup is being impacted by this COVID, this world of COVID. We won't go back to where we were. We will develop and evolve to something new. I was thinking, and I had conversations with people this week, do you think we'll go back to shaking hands? When this first started, um, I was at home. My car wouldn't start. had to get my battery jump. One of my neighbors was outside. Hadn't met this neighbor. We would see each other outside and wave, you know, as you're passing through. So I just went and said, hey, my battery stopped. Can you give me a jump? Um, and this was at the beginning of COVID. And when he did, I reached out to shake his hand. He shook mine. And we both were like, oh, we're not supposed to do that. Now? I don't reach out my hand. It's embedded. That is gone. Will we go back to the part of life where we're comfortable just reaching out and shaking someone's hand? How long will it take before we get that comfortable? Will it go so long that handshakes no longer are the polite thing? They are a thing of the past. So that life that we knew may be different. Uh, that when we think about the things that we grieve, the things that we lost, just going out, even if even those who are ready to go out and who are going out to restaurants and clubs and bars, those are still not the same. If you go to a restaurant, they're not at 100% capacity, so it just looks and feels different. Things are just not the same. We have this sense of loss of life the way we knew it. When you think about the loss, loss of relationships the way we knew them. I'm a person who loves to entertain. It is August. By now, I would have had four reasons to have people over my house. And the reason is just because, okay, it's Sunday, we're having dinner. It might be potluck. It might be, I just feel like the last one before COVID in January, I just made a big pot of gumbo. Why? Because I wanted to entertain. That was the last time I had that opportunity. That's a loss of normalcy. Easter came and went. Didn't go anywhere. 
uh, Memorial Day came and went. Didn't go and have a big celebration. Our family reunion time came and went, but we didn't have it. So those normal gatherings that people have that give you that sense of normalcy, for many people that didn't happen this year. So your sense of who you are, just that normalcy, that's something you can, people are grieving. That's part of why you're feeling this depression. It's that loss that's there where you're feeling like something's not right. You're right. It's not right because so many things are different. So many things are gone out of your life. When we think about just the grief, um, if you're looking, if you have any grief rituals, type them in. By grief ritual, I mean this. <clears throat> How many of you, if someone dies, you take some food to the house? And that's a real black thing. We're going to take some chicken, usually. At the time of somebody's death, you reach a point, it's laughable. And you think, if I see another chicken, I'm going to fly out of here. You are so sick of chicken. I don't know why chicken has become the official food for bereavement. But we're going to take chicken. We're going to take salad. We're going to take water. We're going to take soft drink. We take food. Well, it is a very necessary thing because people who are have recently lost somebody, they need to eat, don't want to eat, not going to take time to eat. So it's a logical thing. It's a comfort. Another ritual or thing that people do is simply just go and sit. Oh, wow. We're in this time of COVID. We're not just going to sit at someone's house. And it may be that you just sit there and watch TV with them. You may, you're just there with them. You're not doing anything but being there. And that thought of an idea of just being there is not the same anymore. We're not with people in the same way because you're not sitting in the room with them just spending time, just being there. Another very different thing, something else that we miss, something else that's a loss for us. Um, some other things in terms of just rituals with, in terms of um, life to death. Oh, here's one I thought about. You know, when, when you're getting ready for a funeral, you want to get your hair done, you might want to get something to wear, all these things. So somebody might pick you up and say, um, I'm just going to go and, um, I got, I'm going to come pick you up and take you to get a dress. I'm going to take you to do this. Um, Daniel says when things get out of sync, I go back and rewatch this movie called the secret and re reflect on positive thoughts. It's on YouTube. So when you're, and I'm going to hold that comment because that's one of those things we're going to talk about. What do we need to do to turn this around? One of the biggest things that we are missing in terms of loss of a person, a loved one, the funeral. Our culture says this is how we celebrate a person's life. This is what we do when a person dies. Well, in the world of COVID, it is not the same. We're not having, especially early on, when someone passed away, you might have to wait a couple of months to have a funeral. You may not have had one. If you did, it was limited. It may have been someone who was well-loved, who initially you knew there would have been two, 300 people there, but it was limited to just a few. And so even if you were one of the ones who were there, you knew others weren't. Um, <clears throat> it made it feel a little lost. It was crazy for you. Um, just those things. It's not normal, so to speak. Um, what are some other? Oh, here's some other things I thought just about the rituals. Go and get a mani pedi because you want to be, you want to look good. And then really, at that point, it's not about the nails. It's not about the hair. It's not about the clothes. It's about someone wanting to be there for you be there with you, and just spending that time, which we don't have. Um, I see someone on and they say they don't have sound. If you hover over the picture, it might be a little speaker, and it might have an X by it. If so, just click it, and you should get the sound. Um, some other things. So when I was preparing for this, I will tell you, this was something... Um, 
Oh, and Erlene says, what about the repast? After the funeral, we have this repast. And that's where after you go out to the cemetery and you come back either to the church or someone's home and you have a meal together. And everyone is there and they're sharing this meal. It's a lot of talking and hugging and you're seeing people you may not have seen for a long time. And you're just in that space with everybody. And again, it's not really about the meal. It's about being able to be there with the family. And just a lot of times it's being there. Um, it's being there with just everybody you may not have seen. Funerals are reunions. Funerals are reunions. And so we don't get that. I can think of going to funerals. And the older you get, the more of a reunion it is. And sometimes the only time you see everybody is at a funeral. And I can know the church I grew up in when there, there's someone who passes away before COVID. And at the funeral, it's like, you know, we've got a plan to get together without it being a funeral. Well, now that option is not on the table. So we have to think, you know, all these things are just missing from our lives. Some other uh, rituals. Um, some other rituals are things we may miss, not just related to um, a funeral or death. What about the ritual of going to a religious service? If it's a church, a temple, a mosque, some are going back, but most have not. You do have some who are there en masse. They are there packed in. You have a lot who say, you know, I'm looking at this COVID. It doesn't look like I want to be in a room with a lot of people. And pastors who are saying, I don't want you in a room with a lot of people. And so you're missing that because churches, temples, mosques, you're with people that you know and love and have a common bond with. And all of them tend to have a time where you can share, share the love, they may call it. And you're hugging and you're doing it, this. Um, you're doing all of these um, things. But they're gone now. Large churches, small churches, just to go and reach and hug somebody. That's not there. That's something else. That's a loss that you have. Hello, Williams family. I see you just popped in. We're talking about grief and loss. Those of you who are on, are there some things that I have have not mentioned that are things you may be experiencing right now, things you see as a loss? It's like, ah, I miss this. I miss seeing people. For our students, not going back to school is a loss. Yes, there's some that don't want to go back. They feel better at home. But there, I have lots of students I um counsel in my practice and I will tell you they are at a point where they want to go back to school and the younger they are the more they want to go back they want to see their friends it's not fair they, they're not understanding or I'm sick of the computer I don't want to do that again my younger kids really don't get it my high schoolers are like well yeah I want to go back to school why well I need to see my friends I, I don't really want to work on the computer um I've had students say they can't focus or they just miss it. It doesn't seem right. That's that loss of normalcy. So these are all losses that we have experienced um, and continue to experience. What do we do with that? Um, let's see. You know, when I read the definition earlier, um, what APA, American Psychological Association, says about grief they talked about how grief can have physical impacts on your life. Um, grief can cause depression. People can be so in their grief that they can also become suicidal because you can't get out of that moment, uh, especially with intense loss. loss. I've talked to people who have lost uh, four or five people. I have a friend who lost four uh, family members last week. It was in a week. Um, not necessarily due to COVID. People are dying from the same reasons they died before COVID. Cancer, car accidents, um, murder. These are all things I've talked to people in the last week that they have had, you know, a loss based on these issues. So because of that, it can maybe traumatic grief with, when you have that person who's lost four or five people. Um, you are so... you. Or dealing, you go to a funeral, and on the way to the funeral, 
So you get word that somebody else just died. You can't even process either one at that point because it's so confusing. I have a couple of people who said, I miss traveling. So do I. I was talking to someone yesterday and I said, you know, I haven't gone out of town since this year. Not anywhere. I went to Houston for a day to go to a funeral and a wedding in one day. And that's a whole nother crazy story. But yes. Um, but just to go somewhere. Normally this time of year, I have a group of friends. We do a uh, water rafting trip. Um, we go down to San Marcos and go tubing rather. And we just, ah, it would be coming up this weekend. Our tubing trip is not going to happen this year. So there are those things you miss that were part of, you know, you were just traveling. Just, I don't want to go get on a plane. So, but just getting on a plane, getting on Megabus, don't want to do that. Getting in your car and traveling because you're not sure where you're going. Lots of people are renting RVs now because they don't have to worry about checking into a hotel and decide if it's clean or not because you have the RV. You go to RV park and you park and you stay there. That is how some people are traveling. Um, I see someone else say it. Their coworkers, um, they miss their coworkers. They miss the school environment as a teacher or, or a counselor. Just missing... I need to be there with the people. I, I miss that. Summer break is over. Man, we've been on break since spring break. I miss the normalcy of my life. Um, any other things? Drop them in because you are probably not the only one. And then just some of the, um, we talked about the rituals around a funeral. Like I say, there are other just r rituals in life. For me, it was entertaining. Or just have another group of friends. We'd just get together on a Sunday, we had just started last year where um, the first Sunday of the month, we were trying to get together and just have dinner. Well, well, after COVID, we weren't doing that. So there's so many just your normal rituals of life. People who like to travel, since that one has come up, uh, travel abroad. Well, you can't do that because uh, some countries are not letting you in. Going to some states, if you travel, they don't want you coming in. So all those things are just, it's a halt to them. It's like, okay, we can't do this now. What does that look like? Um, it doesn't look pretty, I tell you that. So what I want to do, you know me, I don't want to, um, oh, Carolyn Devon says, no one uh, not able to watch her grandson in sports. Those of you who have children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, neighbors, kids who are big into sports, that is taken away. And this whole college football not happening. Major angst for lots of people. And so not just for the players, for those who love them, who want to see, like Carolyn says, just seeing her grandson play. That's just part of how she wants to celebrate him. That option is not there. Um, so what do we do? You know, I have to switch to... The positive. I'm trying to get back to some of the comments, and uh, I'm not as good at. I miss them. There were some movies that people mentioned. I know Sonya put one in, and Daniel put one in, and I said I wanted to come back to that. So when we think about what do you need to do differently, how can I go and just have some fun? I want to spend more time t talking about what to do than just examining the problem. I think we get it that there that our life has changed and just that is a moment of grief for us. But those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, it's even deeper and so many people have lost numerous um loved ones. So let's start with that. What do you do if you've lost a loved one during this time? And you weren't able to have the normal closure because the funeral, the repast, the everything before the funeral, the time with the family is how we begin to heal because that's how we know to heal. So we have a mechanism that's worked for years. It's gone. So what do you do? Well, let me share this. When I was, uh, I decided to do this, um, I was like, oh, man, 
I don't know if I really want to do this. I see Eugene popped in, and Eugene is a friend of mine, and he's the one that said, you really should do something on grief. And he has said it before, and this weekend, after talking to him, I said, okay, I will. Let me tell you what happened Saturday. Saturday, I am working on this. I'm, you know, I like to do research and read and, and just have a lot of knowledge about whatever I'm talking about. But I also wanted to just clean up. Mine, that nesting bug is hit. I had three boxes of old mail, three little uh, cartons of old mail I needed to go through. So I'm going through old mail and old papers and throwing away and shredding. Well, my best friend died near the beginning of this madness in COVID. I came across a card I bought for her. She's an artist, and I bought this card. I saw this card uh, with Frida Caldo, one of her favorite artists. So I bought the card. She was sick. She had cancer. I brought the card for her. Um, I didn't get a chance to give it to her. So when I saw the card, my heart just sank because I was like, "What is this?" I saw her name on the outside, and I opened it, and I remember it was a it was a cut out card uh, of the artist with her with a paintbrush in her hands, and I put a message in there to her, and it had stickers with things that the artist had said. So when I saw that, as the kids say, I was feeling some kind of way. So, you know, I was not quite in the zone of wanting to continue to clean up. So I thought, okay, I'm not going to tackle the last box. I'll finish this. I need a break. And I've been sitting there for hours going through things. Two pieces of paper after that, I ran across my sister's death certificate. Now that, those two things, pushed me over the edge. So Man, I'm like, and I'm supposed to go and start working on this thing about grief. This is not looking good for me. This is so not a good look. How am I going to manage it? Uh, I can't do grief on Thursday because I just can't deal with it. Well, instead of staying in that place of I can't do deal with it, I went to a place of if I'm feeling this way by seeing just these two pieces of paper of people that I love who are gone, it's multiplied for people who have lost more than one person during this time. So I wanted to use that feeling to think, what can I do for me that I can share with others? So um, I had to take my son to work. And my I'm a water person. It's so one thing I don't like about living in this area. I don't have a beach. I need to be able to go to. If I was in Houston, I would have driven to Galveston, found a little quiet part where there's no one there and just sat by the water for about an hour and I'd be okay. Well, that option, um, that option wasn't there. So there was a little lake in Arlington. I drove by there. It was too many people there for it to feel serene. Y'all, I went back home and went and got in the bed. <laughs> I'm just going to be real. I got in the bed and I was tired. Um, so I got in the bed, but I decided I'm not going to mope or moan. I turned on a uh, rom-com. Let me go look at a, uh, you know, a romantic comedy movie. There are a lot of these ridiculous rom-com Nigerian movies on Netflix. <laughs> and so that's what I did. Because You know why? Because when I'm watching that, I'm not going to think about it. It was something silly to do. So one of the things is find something to lift your spirits. It may be an inspirational movie. It may be just something silly, like um, a Nigerian love story. They are funny. Um, and this one I found was just cute. My son thinks I looked at the craziest movies, but I think that about his movies as well. So I found something just to change my mood. I did just go lay in bed at first for a while and I was like, well, you can't just mope and you can't fall asleep because you got to pick your child up in a couple of hours. So watched a movie it didn't, and it changed how I was feeling in that moment. So sometimes it's just do something to change your immediate moment. And that's what I had to do. So I watched a silly movie. There are inspirational movies, if you can get in the comments and see, and I'm not going to figure it out while I'm, um, let me see, I don't, I don't know how to do that. I can only see a few of them. So between now and next time, I'll figure out how I can scroll through the comments while I'm on, um, but there were some movies that people, I remember one was um, The Secret. 
that someone said that's a movie they watch. Find something that makes you feel good. And some people um, have go-to movies. You know, this I'm going to watch this uh, movie because when I watch it, I feel good. Sometimes people have movies they watch. If I watch this movie, I know I'm going to cry. And maybe sometimes you need to get that cry out. So you put on that sad movie and you get it out. Um, Sister Mama Sonia says in two weeks, her dad, our dad, will be gone. It'll be four years and she's still grieving. And, you know, when, like I said, when I saw my sister's death certificate after seeing my be- a card I didn't give to my best friend, it wiped me out. The thing with grief, with loss of someone, anything can sideline you. You can be sidelined quickly and not even know it. It is just like when I saw that card, my heart sank just seeing it. And every feeling I had, because earlier that day I was thinking, and when that part of your brain that once seemed to be normal is like, oh, I need to go do such and such. I'm going to call Lenny and we can go. Oh, he's like, oh. One, I can't, where I wanted to do was not really an option in the world of COVID. And two, I could not call her because she's not here. So already being there, you know. Um, Eugene says he watches Touched by an Angel. Sister Mama Sonia says she'll watch Preacher's Wife. Man, sometimes Touched by an Angel that will make me sad. Some of them, because somebody's got to die. So Andrew, if you've ever seen the show, there's Andrew the Angel. If I see Andrew on there, that means somebody's going to die. I might not want to watch it. So, but it's, but it is inspiring and uplifting, but sometimes it's like, oh, and some of them, if I know, and it's on, oh, I can't watch that one because I'm going to feel sad when that person dies. Um, but you find out, you know, what makes you feel good. Hi, Kamala. Thank you. I'm looking at these comments. Awesome. So when we're thinking about this, let's get to some other things we can do. Like I said, I watched a Nigerian rom-com and we have all these movies that people are saying they're going to do. Another one. And I talked about this last week. Let your voice be the touch for someone. If you know someone who has lost someone during this time of grief, reach out to them. Call them. Talk to them. Everybody's not going to do Zoom. We can do that Zoom where you can see them or Duo or um, there's so many platforms. You can video chat or FaceTime or all of these things. Do something where you can reach out and let them hear your voice. And if you think about older people who may not be FaceTiming, who may not be Zooming, people in their 80s and they're at home, I've talked to several people who have older parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts who are not getting out, and no one wants to go see them because they don't want to take anything to them because they love them, but that's causing them to be there alone. And they may have lost someone, a specific situation where um, someone in their 80s lost their mate. And now they're home alone and nobody's really visiting because they don't want to take anything to them germ-wise. Wow. So now they're alone. So I encourage the family, if you, if you have to come up with a schedule of calling so that every day, She gets more than one call. She and her husband were married like um, more than 50 years. And now she's home alone and people don't want to go to her house. So she's grieving the loss, not just of her husband, but of her family. Because um, they're not going over there. And they have kind of worked through some, some things where someone is going to see her physically going in. There was another family member who's not who's working the home, so they're not out as much, so they're physically going there. But to imagine losing your mate of over 50 years, and now you're in your house by yourself, and no one's coming to see you, that's another loss. So if you know someone who has lost somebody, reach out to them. Um, call them. Get Do something. Uh, the power of your voice is so strong, just hearing it. Um, I can think of, I called someone not too long ago, and they were like, I'm just so glad you called. It is so good to hear a voice. I was sitting here, and I was just kind of in a funk. So if somebody's on your mind, they're there for a reason. If they're on your mind, pick up the phone and just say, hey, you were on my mind. How are you doing? And that might let the floodgates open. And they may just need to talk, talk, talk. And that's okay because you were the one that called. If they're on your mind, they are there. Call them. 
talk to them. Just reach out and touch. And maybe they just need to hear it. And maybe it'll bring a smile to their face just to know someone thought about them. So on my list of things to do good, um, create new rituals. We've talked about the rituals around a person dying. We don't know when they're coming back, the repairs, the funeral, the um, any of that. A funeral where there are 300 people in a room, unless you're John Lewis or somebody, they're not letting that happen. So these things may not be back for a long time. We have to begin to create new ways to, um, new ways, things to do. Here's one that Carolyn Devon said, write a letter to the loved one, seal it and put it away, letting them know how you're feeling. So yeah, write a letter to them, write letters to people. And especially when we think about older people, and I'm kind of focusing on that, older people are used to getting mail. (laughs) <laughs> and man, if there's somebody older, like I talked about the person who is in their eighties and their mate died and people aren't visiting them man, not just a card, but a letter, it's a throwback. We don't do letters anymore, but wow, when you get one, it's like, wow, that's cool because they know somebody took the time out to do something. So write a letter. That's a good one. Um, If you have any ideas, drop them in. What are some things you can do to help people heal who are currently grieving the loss of a person, grieving the loss of life the way they knew it? Maybe things have changed. Maybe your job is gone. And too often our identity is tied into our job and what we're doing. Well, maybe that's not here right now. What do you do? What do you do to make that happen? So if you have any ideas, drop them in. Um, The other thing is be purposeful about your thoughts. When you're in that moment of things are just, you're in that moment of depression. And remember I said the American Psychological Association talks about grief can lead to depression, which can lead to suicidal thoughts. We don't want that. So what do you do? Sometimes you really have to purposefully think and you stop that thought. By that I mean when you feel those negative thoughts coming in and they're overwhelming, have that go to something you want to think about. For instance, it might be a scripture, a passage, a poem. If it's the loss of a person, it might be something that person said that you hold on to. So that in your mind, when you find those negative thoughts overtaking you, uh, the thoughts of sadness, the thought of um, just despair, this is a little crazy and it's not as easy as it sounds. It's not just that don't think about it, but purposely allow yourself to say, rather than have that thought, I'm going to have this thought. Um, Someone I know said uh, one of the verses they talked about, thought in their mind that they want to hold on to is, um, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. So when they have that thought of being depressed, feeling down, wait a minute, I may feel that way, but I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God's got this. Someone else says theirs was, uh, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. So God, I know you there, wherever you are, you need to hurry up and come, but they hold on to that. Another one was, um, I can do all things through Christ. That means I can get through this. So find out and begin to tell yourself that because what happens is you rehearse those negative thoughts in your mind. I feel so bad. I can't do this. And it's true. In that moment, you do. You feel horrible. You can't do this. I feel overcome with despair. When you continue to say that, that's what's there. Eugene says, Uh, His song is put on a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. And that's it, that garment of praise. When you're feeling heavy, rather than hold on to the heaviness, hold on to a spirit of praise. The best time to praise God is when you don't feel like it. Yes, that sounds a little crazy. But when you don't feel like it the most because of the despair, and the despair is taking over, change that thought. Give yourself a new thought. That's where music, music is so powerful. Have that song that's going to uplift you. And the song that uplifts you may not necessarily be a spiritual song, a gospel song. It may be just something that's going to change your mood. It's going to change the way you see things. 
it's that song that just makes you feel good. It may be some P-Funk. And I say that because somebody the other day said that's their go-to when they are really feeling crazy. And you have to be old on this call, young folks. Anybody younger than mm, 50, you may not know about P-Funk unless you're an old school kid. But you put on some P-Funk, he said, and that, that was his go-to music. Um, so when he was down, that just a mothership connection. It just brought back good memories and it was great. So it's whatever is going to, you know, draw those good feelings in you. Um, so that's what you're going to hold on to. Carolyn says, take a walk. Taking a walk, exercising, movement is so good. What happens when you do that, the reason it's so good, it releases endorphins in your brain. Endorphins are the happy hormones. When you are walking, when you are exercising, when you are running, jogging, lifting, you are doing things that are going to produce chemicals in your brain to make you physically feel better. You know, take a brisk walk, take a slow walk. Like I say, for me, it would be walk by some water. I'm still working on giving that up now that I live up here in Dallas and that option. And yes, people tell me there are lakes. That's right. A lake does not do it. If I can see land on the other side, it doesn't work for me. If you see that picture at the top, that's what I need to see. As far as I can see, water. That's my go-to. So I'm working on finding the replacement go-to. Um, and Galveston is not a pretty beach, but it's our beach. And I, will, I always have to say, I know it's an ugly beach. It's ours. I can say that we can call it that. No one else can. But find that place for you that makes you feel centered, that makes you feel calm. I do the relaxation breathing, and lately I've had to do a lot of it. Uh, we breathe at the beginning of this call. Yeah, I do that as well. Um, but find things, find people that are going to make you feel good. I talked about you being the one to reach out to others when you feel it, but have people that you can reach out to. Is there someone you can just call and say, I'm having a moment. Someone needs to be able to be there to let you have that moment only for a moment. So they're going to be there to not give you pious platitudes about, and that might not be the moment you hear God's got this, he's going to handle it. They might need to just listen to you for a moment and just listen and see how you feel. But then they're going to take you to the other level. Say, okay, now enough. Well, what are we going to do? They're going to take you to that positive thought. So have that go-to person that's going to say, yeah, you're right. I know, I know you're feeling, you're feeling down, but, and you need that, but. So they are going to give you, they're going to let you have your moment, but they're going to lift you up. You know, here's another one that I thought about. Just smile. Smile when you have nothing to smile about. Now that is hard. And that's why maybe it's watching a silly movie that will make you smile. Again, the muscles, it goes back to, you know, I've talked about how mind, body, spirit will all one. Smiling, using the smile muscles is going to change the way you're feeling. Think about it. If you're there, make a, make a frown face. Just, just frown. Make the meanest face you can right now. Ugly mean face. Now stop. Now smile. Do you feel different? When you're frowning or making that mean, ugly face versus when you're smiling, you actually feel different. So do something that's going to make you smile when you don't feel like smiling. Do something to make you smile. That is going to help change that mood. So grief is something we can't avoid in life. We don't know how to deal with it now because it's coming faster and faster and faster and we're not able to do the rituals that we've done before to manage it so we need to create new ones we need to be there for each other and as any time with grief we need to let a person grieve the way they need to grieve we need to pull them along when we need to to help them through it so they don't get stuck if they are stuck we can't blame them for being stuck because there is no time limit on grief. We get through it when we get through it. 
Um, Erlene says, look in the mirror for a while and smile and sing. Sing to yourself. It doesn't have to, you don't have to have a beautiful voice because you should love your own voice. Good or bad or off key, it's yours. Sing and smile. Let that other person sing and smile. Be there. Smile with or for that person who's grieving. Now's the time you might do that Zoom call, that uh, FaceTime or some video chat where you can just laugh with them, smile with them, uh, work out with them. I have some friends at one point, and we stopped it. Work schedules changed, but we were working out on YouTube together. So we'd all, we call, link up, put the YouTube on. Everybody had their own YouTube, and we worked out together. So if there's someone who's grieving, who they, they're stuck, they can't move, there is a YouTube video for any fitness level you have. There is chair yoga. There is chair aerobics. There is exercise for back pain, exercise for neck pain. There's everything on there. So whatever that issue is they may be having, I'm going to exercise with you. Okay, go to this YouTube and we'll do it together. So begin to do things. When I talk about finding new rituals, finding things you do with people, Find something different to do with people, to bring them out, things that we know are healthy. So we're not taking that chicken over to the house, fried, baked, or rotisserie. We're not taking it. We're not going to sit there and just have a lot of people at the house just sitting there. So you be the one to be there, that one after another, to constantly be there for whomever it is. As we wind down, I want to remind you that um, if you have future topics that you would like to be addressed, if you have people you would like to be interviewed, drop it in the comment section. I will be looking at, the, at them and I will let you know. We'll start on that. Someone told me they had some topics they wanted to drop in. Awesome. As I said, this topic, thanks to Eugene Lang. I managed to talk about grief even after this weekend. So drop those comments in. And next Friday, and I have forgotten the exact time. I think it's like 1 something, one twelve. It's a really odd time. I will be on Business Talk Radio. I'm going to post that on my Facebook page tomorrow um, when I make sure I have all the details. And I'd love to have you listen in and invite others to listen in. The more the merrier. Uh, this is something I'm enjoying doing and want to do more. So join in. So today, um, take a moment to smile. If you're grieving the loss of the life you had before COVID, it is gone. It's okay to grieve it. Find a reason to laugh. Maybe do something to move. Maybe do something for someone else. We talked about that. So even managing your grief may be doing something for someone else. If you know someone who's going through, as I said, my friend who had four deaths in a week, you go to one funeral and you find out someone else died on the way to the funeral, be able to do something for those people. So next week, we'll be back right here on Thursday for Thinking Thursday. Not sure what the topic will be next week, but you have a say in that. I'll choose something from whatever comments come my way. If you can't think of something now, you can just drop a post or message me and say, hey, I'd like to hear about this. Or this would be a great guest and I can work to contact that person and make it happen. So I will see you next week. And remember, mental health is health. So stay healthy. See you next week.